Hey everyone, welcome back to Startup Hack. With my 25 years of development experience, here at Startup Hack, we turn beginners into full stack developers in as little as three months. Today, we're diving into a showdown between two giants in the NoSQL world, MongoDB and DynamoDB. So let's break down their pros and cons so you can make a bet the best choice for your next project. All right, so let's dive in here to MongoDB, uh, MongoDB versus DynamoDB. So the first thing we're gonna dive into is the pros for MongoDB. So the first part of the pros is that MongoDB allows for a flexible schema. It allows for dynamic and flexible schemas, making it easier to evolve the data model over time. The next is that it provides a rich query language. It supports a powerful query language, including support for complex queries, indexing, and aggregation. It also has a very large community support. MongoDB has a large and active community providing extensive documentation, tutorials, and community support. So let's jump over to the pros for DynamoDB before we get into the cons. So DynamoDB is designed for seamless scalability with virtually unlimited throughput and storage, making it suitable for applications with unpredictable workloads. DynamoDB also is a fully managed service provided by AWS and it reduces overall overhead and ensuring high availability and durability. DynamoDB also offers single digit multi-second latency for read and write operations, making it suitable for latency sensitive applications. So it's very performant. So those are some of the pros of the two. And when you stand each other up against each other, I'd be curious to hear which ones you guys like better about the pros. So let's dive into a little bit about the cons. Now, the cons of MongoDB is it doesn't scale very well. In scalability, MongoDB horizontally can be complex and requires careful planning compared to DynamoDB's built-in scalability. The next part is that it's transactions. Although MongoDB has introduced multi-document transactions, they come with some limitations and complexities compare, compared to traditional relational databases. Lastly, the data size. MongoDB may not be the best choice for very large data sets due to its storage engine overhead and memory use. So those are some of the cons, and let's look at some of the cons for DynamoDB now. So in comparison, some of the cons for DynamoDB is that it can be expensive, especially for applications with high throughput or storage requirements due to its pricing model based on provisioned throughput and data storage. And I find this with a lot of services provided through uh, cloud service providers. Also, limited query capabilities. DynamoDB's query capabilities are more limited compared to MongoDB's rich query language, which may require denormalization or additional application logic. And then lastly, it's a vendor locked in. Using DynamoDB ties, you, ties your applications at AWS, potentially limiting portability and making it harder to switch to another provider in the future. Now, as with all of our videos, we always provide you code samples, so make sure you go to our GitHub, which I'll provide the link down below, and go pull down the latest code samples, because today we're gonna go through and show you how to, uh, how to connect to these different uh, databases using .NET. All right, so let's dive, dive into the code samples here then. So you can see here we have a MongoDB manager, and in this MongoDB manager, you can see an example about how we would run these. So, the first part is a MongoDB, we create a MongoDB manager class. And again, you can pull down all these code samples, so make sure you check these out. Uh, don't always write this stuff yourself. We can, we can help you out and save you some time. So you just need the connection string, the database name, and the collection name. These get passed in, and then you can see an example of how we would insert the document. So in this case, we can run the MongoDB locally here and our database name with the collection name. We can then create a single document, and in this came, in case we're keeping it very simple, and then call it insert the document. It's that simple to get started. You can see that we're literally at less than 40 lines of code to get up and running with MongoDB. So very straightforward, very simple in .NET. All right, now let's dive into DynamoDB. So DynamoDB isn't much more complex. Uh, looks like it's about the same lines of code. Um, and so very simple, we have the DB, DynamoDB manager, and we, from these, we would include the Amazon uh, libraries. And so you'd want to include the Amazon libraries to be able to work with DynamoDB. We would then uh, call the table name and the client. And you can see in a very simple uh, set of use case, we'd be able to then insert an item into the DynamoDB. So these are just some code samples, and you can see uh, that these are the, some of the coding samples that we do. Make sure that you like and subscribe to our channel, because we always try to bring you great content. And tell me what you think. 
Why do you like the one or the other? Do you like DynamoDB? Do you like MongoDB? Which one do you use? And why do you use them for various projects? Make sure you leave comments down below. I love a healthy debate. So tell me where I'm wrong or tell me if I've missed some things. And make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. We'll catch you next time. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel because we bring you lots of great tutorials and tips that every developer should know. See you next time.